Hello, welcome to AMCI Saturday Study Session, or SSS. I'm Mrs. J, Curriculum Director here at AMCI, and I am delighted to present AMCI Lead Instructor, Ms. Tamika, along with her guest. Without further ado, let's get started. Take it away, Ms. Tamika. Good morning, coders. How are you doing? It's always a pleasure to see you guys here. Good morning, Heather. I see Geetha in there and Miss Keisha and Lisa. Hello. All right, y'all. You know what we're doing today, right? We are doing Path and Lab and Medicine. We're going to have a good time today with this topic, too. And I know you're ready. All right. And before we get going, you know, I got to bring Ms. Bennett to the floor. Y'all know this is my partner in, in code. OK, because we're not breaking no laws. So we're not partners in crime. <laughs> Come on, lady. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're not breaking any laws yet. OK, no, just kidding. Hello, coders. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and tell me in the chat, what is your favorite Thanksgiving uh, food? Because, you know, it's that time again. So uh, I'm going to mute myself now and I will be awaiting your rapid fire answers in the chat. All right. Happy coding today. Thank you, lady. All right. We're going to have us a virtual Thanksgiving feast. I, I feel it in my bones. OK, I'm, I'm going to bring, I don't know, maybe the dressing or something. That's what I'm going to do. So, hey, during this time of Thanksgiving, yeah, oftentimes it is the simple things that bring the most joy, so, jo, jo, the most joy. So we're going to pause for a moment and take a breath and live in the moment. And I want you to remember that concept as you code today when we get some of the ones that are a little bit longer. Yeah, it is the simple things that bring the most joy. Just pause, take it in and just take a breath. All right. At the end, you guys know what we want. We want that feedback. You know why it's important. It does continue to help AMCI deliver quality classes for you deserving coders. It helps your instructor help you. It helps Miss Bennett and I to give you quality content. No feedback means no good. We want to hear from you coders. We want this investment of your Saturday time to be well worth it. And we so appreciate you guys coming and being ready to roll. All right, Miss Heather's going to, she's going to bring the green bean casserole or maybe some mashed potatoes and gravy. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. <laughs> oh, man. So, hey, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. All right, and Geetha's having the pumpkin pie and the fried chicken is what you, look here, look at here. Don't y'all get me started, all right? Don't get me started. Somebody bring the mac and cheese. All right, Miss Keisha, see, before I, I was about to say, where's the mac and cheese? All right, Miss Keisha's got us with the mac and cheese. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and turkey and all the trimming. All right, thank you, Miss Lisa. I think we're ready. We're ready for our, for our virtual feast. <laughs> so in honor of Thanksgiving, all right, this season of Thanksgiving, which is year round really no classes okay the week of november 23rd through the 28th so you can take the time to kind of regroup and if you need to catch up on some things you can do that but please take a moment to enjoy this time all right all right our copyright cpt copyright 2020 american medical association all rights reserved cpc is a registered trademark of the aapc aapc content found within this presentation is copyright of aapc keyword concept ftr chun amci fab 7 amci icd 10 flip tap are trademarks of amci you guys know the agenda, right? Yeah, I changed the background color too. Just pep it up a little bit. All right, we've done our introductions. You already know myself and Miss Bennett. We've done that copyright. Just remember those steps for solving the time scenario. I know you guys have it down. Consider the who, what, when, where, how. Consider all of these things as you read that scenario and you begin to narrow down your code choices. Remember those keyword concepts. Remember certain words will help you to paint the picture and certain words are key to help pivot you to the proper code choice. Remember those FTRs. Be sure to have them placed on the page that corresponds to those code families 
that they're related to. This will help to serve as your map to keep you on track, get you pointed in the right direction, okay? All right, we're ready to do what you came here for, those time scenarios, all right? So let's do this in the words of my 10-year-old nephew. Let's do this, baby, all right? You're gonna crush it, I know you are, all right? Everybody's ready. Everybody's got their beverage. Hey, Renata, we're glad you're back. Yes, good to have you, lady. <laughs> so here we go, all right? All righty, you know who's coming to read this scenario. And afterwards, you'll have two and a half minutes. Come on, lady, I'm tagging you in. My tag team partner, let's do this. I'm it, okay, let's do it. A, 88300, B, 88305, C, 88307, and D, 88309. What is the code for gross and microscopic examination, surgical pathology of breast tissue from a simple mastectomy? Coders, your two and a half minutes begin now. Happy coding. I think that was everybody. I think so. We've got some last ones popping in here, so that's good. All right. I, all right. I see you in there, lady. Good catch. All right. Thank you, Miss Bennett. So you're right. We got everybody. They're ready to roll. All right, coders. So everybody got there. Some of you needed just a little nudge. So it was between mostly a and C, and I had a few people um, take 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 the bait with D, and that's okay. I want to see everybody, regardless of what you answer, so that I know what to pinpoint, so that when you see something like this going forward, you will know, like, yeah, this is this is what I need to do. Okay, so we're here to just fine tune it a bit. So how do we get to C? We know that this is gross and microscopic examination. This is of surgical pathology of the breast tissue from a simple mass mastectomy. Now we know we're going to head on over here to these various codes that are organized by family according to the level. All right. So when we look at level one, 88300, this is simply surgical pathology gross examination only, meaning they're just looking at it with the naked eye. Okay. So we know uh, -uh that's not what we need. Just bare eye examination. No, something further happened with that, okay? We have gross examination and microscopic examination, and we're looking at simple breast tissue from a mastectomy. When we look at code family 88305, this is level four, but look here, biopsy and mammoplasty, all right? No, oh, we've got more going on. This is biopsy and mammoplasty, but we simply need this breast tissue from a simple mastectomy, all right? This is talking about breast reduction, a breast biopsy. If you don't have 
some notation by these these um, particular um, descriptions in this level. Put some there so that so that you don't get distracted and start trying to read more into it than what you need. Biopsy and mammoplasty. That's a good place to start with this particular code here. Bare eye examination. That way, you know, like when you see microscope, you know you're done with that group. Okay, so just give yourself some little road markers there. With eight eight three zero seven, exactly what we need: breast mastectomy, partial or simple. Go ahead and notate this. All right, on 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 your your code level. Okay, right here, so that you know. We're going to give that a light. Yes, because you know we've got to do our due diligence when we look at code family 88309. This is breast mastectomy, but this is with regional lymph nodes. All right, that's a that's a bit more involved. So 88309, that is a no-go. And 88307, we're going to give that a firm yes. I want you to also notice, you know, I'm always trying to give you like a rationale for how things are grouped. Notice that as you move along with these codes and they get progressively higher, the procedure or what is going on with this examination gets more in depth of what has happened. Biopsy and mammoplasty. Now we've got a mastectomy, simple or partial. This one is a mastectomy, but, but now we're talking about lymph nodes. So you notice each time, although they're referencing the breast, it's getting progressively more involved. Okay, so I'm just giving you that little, ch that little chun tip and that rationale as well. So it'll keep you on track. Okay, so now you see why um, you wouldn't take uh, A, this is just bare examination. You have something more specific as you move along. We're talking about the breast. All right. Okay. So we're going to keep it moving and we're going to start with our next scenario. All right, Miss Bennett, you got it, lady. A81000 with modifier 26 and modifier QW. B81002 with modifier 26 and modifier QW. C81003 with modifier QW and D81001. What is the code in any required modifiers for dipstick anal urinalysis automated without microscopy performed in a physician office for a Medicare patient? Coders, your two and a half minutes begin now. Good luck.
OK, that is time coders. Thank you, Miss Bennett. All right, if you have not gotten an answer in there, go ahead and slide it on in the chat. And we're going to go ahead and unpack it, OK? You guys were doing your thing today, all right? If you didn't quite get there, you know what we do each Saturday. I'm going to give you a little nudge, OK? No worries. All right, so the answer is C. So, you know, like, I think most of you have that down. And like I said, if you just missed it, we got you. Either way, that's why you're here to fine tune this thing. All right. So for our keywords, we have required modifier or modifiers for this dipstick urinalysis automated without microscopy. All right. No worries. No worries. I got you, lady. All right. So here we go. This was performed in a physician's office for a Medicare patient. All right, so remember, I always tell you, pay attention to your, your various headings that are, that are throughout the chapter to be sure you're in the right neighborhood. This here is talking about a urinalysis. We're talking about a urinalysis. That's pretty good. So let's take a closer look. What about this, 81000? This is urinalysis by dipstick or tablet regent. I like that. All of these things that they are uh, doing with this urinalysis, they're looking at bilirubin, glucose, all of these things. But this is a common code language. I always stress that to you. This is for non-automated with microscopy, all right? The code language that's specific for 81000, that's incorrect. Non-automated, this is automated. Without microscopy, this is with microscopy. So that disqualifies that one. Take that one off the board. All right. All of these things that are common code language, this is a urinalysis by dipstick or tablet region. This all applies. But for code 81000, this is automated with microscopy. Again, this is what? Without microscopy. We're going to get rid of 81001. This leaves us now with 81002. This is non automated without microscopy. Almost there, but not quite. Non automated, this is automated. That disqualifies 81002. All right, now, so we're left with this one 81003, automated without microscopy. So that full code urinalysis by dipstick or tablet regent automated without microscopy. It includes all those things too, okay? But I'm giving you right here. And this is what we're coding for right here. Dipstick urinalysis automated without microscopy. Boom, 81003. Now, you know I'm not going to let y'all go without talking about these what modifiers you know i'm not gonna do that to you all right now when you see 26 i'm highlighting going in here and zeroing in on physician's office remember we talked about this last week this modifier 26 is not required because it's performed in the doctor's office so you would not use this professional component okay because it's performed in the doctor's office they they have all they own the equipment and everything so we don't need that professional component right there wouldn't use it this is in the doctor's office all right now what about this qw this is a medicare patient remember modifier qw is defined as the clia it must always be applied to medicare claims for tests performed in a site with a clia waived certificate all right, so you see QW, you're going to have to use it because it's telling you this is a Medicare patient. So when you look at it, knowing this, knowing about the modifiers, you actually could solve it before you even start looking at the code. You know this wouldn't apply because it doesn't have the QW modifier. It's already told you this is a Medicare patient. But then when you see 26, the 26 modifier, it's performed in the physician's office. Mm. We don't need that because the physician owns all, all of the equipment and everything that's related to performing the test. We wouldn't use that. So boom, we would be right there at C. All right. So if you need to grab a screenshot, go ahead and grab it. We're going to keep on going. All right. All righty. 
Yes, <laughs> they sure did. That's right, Gita. It is there to it. it it's there. We we won't say to really trick you, but it is there to to to, to really. I don't know. It is there to trip you up. <laughs> but it is there, really. They're testing to see how comfortable are you with those modifiers and do you know when you do and don't need them all right so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna have to agree with you but hey y'all got y'all got something in your bag y'all got something in your bag you got the tools to do what you need to do all right miss bennett come on lady let's do this thing okie dokie a 82040 82247 82248 Eight four four five zero, eight two five six five B eight zero zero seven six eight two five six five C eight zero zero seven six and D eight zero zero seven six with modifier twenty two. A patient presents with right upper quadrant pain, nausea, and other symptoms of liver disease, as well as complaints of decreased urination. Her physician orders an albumin, bilirubin, both total and direct alkaline phosphatase, total protein, alanine aminotransferase, aspartate aminotransferase, and creatinine. What CPT codes are reported? Coders, you have two and a half minutes to answer this. Good luck. Okay, that is time. Thank you, Miss Bennett. Hey, you guys are doing some amazing work. I am loving what I'm seeing. And I see everybody has gotten that answer in there. And you guys were spot on, all of you. All right, so hey, you know how I do it. I'm just simply going to unpack it so we can move on to some additional scenarios because you guys already knew it was B and you guys were right there on that correct answer. I love it, love it, love it. So this patient has right upper quadrant pain, nausea, some other symptoms of liver disease. They are also complaining of decreased urination. The physician is ordering an albumin, bilirubin, both total and direct, alkaline phosphatase, total protein, alanine aminotransferase, and aspartate aminotransferase, and creatinine. So how is it reported? 
We're going to head on over here. We're taking a look at 80076. This is indeed a hepatic function panel. So we want to keep in mind about our FTRs, all right, that all of the tests have to be performed in order to use a panel. And if all of the tests aren't performed, then we have to report each additional te each test separately. All right. So and you see all the other things. Don't report two or more panels if they have the same test. And you guys obviously have it down because you guys got there. I love it. All right. So liver disease. Yeah, that that's a clear indication that that looks like something we could probably use. I, I have a sneaky suspicion everybody's chunned it and you've seen Mrs. J's beautiful lecture on how to break these these various code families down that are related to um, different lab tests. And so we have seven there. All right. So it does include the albumin. It includes the bilirubin total in both direct. The alkaline phosphatase is is right there as well. The total protein. OK, that's there. And also the uh, alanine amino transferase, that's right there. And the aspartate amino transferase is right there as well. So we've got those first seven. I like that. All right. And so we know this panel includes everything mentioned except the creatinine. So all we have to do, we're giving that a light yes, because we need to just do our due diligence. But we know we're on the right track. All we have to do is add the creatinine. That's it. Creatinine, we are going to need 82565. Yeah, that right there. That's beautiful. This right here, all of these tests, they, they've listed them out separately. We already know we wouldn't do that because if all of them are part of the panel, you need to code for the panel. All right. And so we wouldn't use that. All right. 80076, that's missing the creatinine. We're halfway there, but we've got to account for that final. Uh, test right there for the creatinine. All right, 80076. We wouldn't use modifier 22 to increase the service to try to account for the lab. We simply code for the lab separately any additional tests. It tells us right there in those FTRs that I know you guys have it down because everybody got there to be. I like what I see. I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> and that's right, Geetha. The names of the panel, it does help you to get to the right place. All right. It makes sense. An hepatic function panel. Yeah, if this person has liver disease, we're going to probably need something that is related to this hepatic function panel. All righty. You know, we've got some more. We've got some more, some more treasures in the trunk. So come on, Miss Bennett. Let's pull out some more goodies for these fabulous coders. All right, lady, you've got the floor. Okie doke. Thank you very much, Miss Tamika. All right. A82947, 82947 with modifier 91. B82947, 82947 with modifier 76. C82948, 82948 with modifier 91, and D82948, 82948 with modifier 76. A 35-year-old type 2 diabetic is feeling weak. The physician performs a stat glucose test in which a finger stick is done, placing the drop of blood on a reagent strip. The test indicates the patient is hypoglycemic. The physician gives the patient some glucose supplements and performs another stat glucose test using the same lab test as before 30 minutes later. The second test shows the glucose levels return to normal. How are the lab tests reported? Coders, you have two and a half minutes to tell us that answer. Good luck.
Okay, coders, that is time. All right, Miss Benny, thank you, lady. All righty, are we ready to pack this thing? I, I think we are, all right? Many of you got there? And no worries if you need a nudge. You know I'm good at giving you a little nudge, okay? No worries there. All right, so you're close, okay? If you just missed it, you are close. All right, so this is a 35-year-old type 2 diabetic. They've had a glucose test in which a finger stick was done. They're placing this drop of blood on a regent strip, and the patient is hypoglycemic. The patient was given some glucose supplements, and now they're going to perform another glucose test 30 minutes later. That makes sense. They're in the office. They are hypoglycemic. Their blood sugar is low, so they're going to give them the glucose supplement. We're going to take another glucose test to see if that blood sugar level is where it should be. All right, so your answer is C. How did we get there? How did we get there. I think you guys knew stat. All right. Cause they're feeling weak. What's going on with the blood glucose level. All right. So they're going to do a stat uh, test with this region strip. So we're going to take a look. We have here, you know, I love it when it's 50, 50. Once we get this first one situated, we're, we're on par. And many of you got there. If the, if the issue was everybody got C, some of you chose D. All right. And no worries. Okay. It came down to those don't go modifiers to modifiers. All right. So 82947, this is glucose. All right. But this is except region strip. Well, they put the drop of blood on a region strip. So you guys already knew. Uh, well, I'm not taking the bait. I'm not taking the bait. All right. That, you know, I think it was Geetha would say they were trying to trick us with that thing on that last one. Yeah, they tried to trick you, but y'all knew. We're not taking the bait. All right. What about 82948? Yeah, this is glucose, but this is blood region strip. That's right where we should be. All right. So we chose that. Everybody got to that one, but they performed another stat glucose, this second test. All right. So a modifier is needed to indicate that second lab test. All right. So it's the same codes, but what's the difference with these modifiers? All right. Well, for 76, this is for a repeat procedure or service. Yeah, but we need specifically a repeat clinical diagnostic laboratory test. All right. Same laboratory test on the same day. Same test. All right. We know it's on the same day because it was performed 30 minutes later. I think, I think somebody got an aha moment. I know they did. All right. <laughs> All right. So if anybody needs a, a screenshot just because you want to maybe rework it, it, then, hey, you can. But we're going to keep on moving. All right. You guys are doing an amazing job. Always appreciate your efforts every Saturday. All right. I'm tagging her in. Y'all know who it is. Come on, Miss Bennett. Okie dokie. All right. A, 80050, B, 80050 with modifier 52, C, 85025, 84443, 82040, 82247, 82310, 82374, 82435, 82947, 84075, 84132, 84155, 84295, 84460, 84450, 84520, and D, 80050 with modifier 22. A physician orders a general health panel. All tests accepted creatinine, including CBC with automated differential. What CBT codes are reported? Coders, your two and a half minutes begin now. Good luck.
Okay, coders, that is time. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Betty. All right, coders, let's go ahead and unpack this scenario. All right, most of you got there. If you didn't quite get there, you're going to have an aha moment. Never you worry. All right. So what are our keywords with this one? We have this general health panel and we have all of the tests performed on this panel except the creatinine, including CBC with automated differential. All right. So your answer is C. All right. So. One thing about when you read this general health panel, all tests except the creatinine, that's a little clue. All right. So this general health panel, we take a look at it. What is the general health panel? All right. This is a panel that includes the comprehensive metabolic panel, which is 80053. It also includes a complete blood count, complete CBC blood count, automated and automated differential CBC count. So you have this or this and this, or it is the complete blood count with this and this and that. It's man and this one here is manual. So if you want you, what you want to do is focus on this first. Okay. And then you just start looking at are, are these codes included? Okay. And again, Mrs. J has broken this down. So the key here is understanding that everything has to be included in this panel in order to use it. In order to use 80053, we have to have all of these tests in this in this panel. Well, it's telling you in the scenario they the physician ordered this general health panel all the tests except the creatinine. So when it says that, start looking. Ah, uh, if it's not included, guess what? Can't use it. We can't use it. All right. As soon as right there. The panel codes can only be reported if all of the tests in the panel are done. Again, that goes back to your FTRs. If any test is left out, in this case, the creatinine was not included. So guess what we've got to do? We've got to code all of them individually. So as soon as we know that, boom, that's gone. That's gone. That's gone. You can't, this one's gone. We can't make it right with the 52. All right. We can't account for even one code being left out of a panel as a reduced service. It's all or nothing in order to report that panel. With the 22, okay, you can't be used, you can't be used to increase the procedural services because we're we want to code for a few more tests because we're we're talking about the CBC automated with the differential. We can't do that again, all or nothing to report the panel. So that's a no-go. All right, so you could get there just like that. And really, that's what this scenario is testing, this concept. So we start going through, we're going to report it, okay? So at this point, we already know we got it. We got some work to do. We're going to code each one of them, all right? Each test from this general health panel and the comprehensive panel. So general health panel is this. That's the other thing. Keep that in your head. That used to confuse me a little bit. So what is the general health panel? It's telling you it's this, which is 80053. It includes the comprehensive metabolic panel, which are all of these tests, plus a CBC, okay, which is going to be this code or this one with that, or it's going to be this, okay, with this or that. And you're always going to have right here. Don't forget this thyroid. Okay, so we're just going to start coding. All right, so we've got the CBC 85025. There it is. All right, or okay, thyroid, this one here. So we're counting for this one. We've got to account for the TSH. That's 84443. All right, and then we just start going down. 82040, 82247,82310. We just keep on going down. We've got the carbon dioxide. We've got the chloride. We've got the glucose. We've got the phosphatase alkaline. Boom. We've got the potassium. We've got a code for that. Protein, the total protein. We've got to get it. We've got the sodium. We got to get him too. We've got that transferase 
Al Alanon Amino or the ALT SGPT. We've got to grab that one. We've got to grab the transferase aspartate amino or the AST. We got to have that too. And we've got to have that bun. Each and every one of them, we've just got to break it out individually and give an account for it. All right. Okay. So you guys already got there, but hey, that's just a little something for you. If you see something, it's saying all of them except boom, there's your clue. Well, then I'm not going to be able to use the A0053 because you left off one. Even if you leave off one, you're going to have to code it individually, okay? All right, so that's our takeaway with that one. We're going to keep it moving. You know we've got some more, but you know what? I'm going to freeze my panel. Don't even start coding this one. I want to get to something a little bit more involved, okay? Because you guys are rolling. All right, so I want to make good use of your time because we've, we've got another section to go to in addition to this one. All right, so I'm going to have Miss Bennett come to the floor, lady. You got it. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> moving on. A88329, B88331 with modifier 26, A88334 with modifier 26, C88331, A88332 times 2, and D, 88331 with modifier 26, 88333 with modifier 26. Dr. Lee performed an intraoperative consultation on a bile duct tumor requiring frozen section and cytological evaluation to a bladder tumor. How would you report his professional services? Professional services. Coders, your two and a half minutes begin now. Good luck. Okie doke, that is time. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. All right, guys, how you doing? All right, this is going to be a very, very teachable moment, okay? This is one of those ones that's like, you, you, I know. Some, you know what? I know sometimes the study session... And I'm and I'm still learning. That's the the beauty of coding is that you will always continue to learn something new. Okay, always. All right. So here we go. We're gonna unpack it. Okay, and 
this one here, everybody was teetering between B and D. All right, so, and that's okay. All right, so your answer is D. And so we have Dr. Lee that's performed this intraoperative consultation. That was not the issue, okay? The issue are these samples, okay? So the consultation was on this bile duct tumor that required frozen section and cytological evaluation to a bladder tumor. So how do you report his professional services? So already we know that we're gonna need that modifier 26. And you guys were, were spot on with that, okay? So intraoperative, how many specimens do we have? Well, we have two. We've got one from the bile duct and one from the bladder, all right? And what was done, okay? We have a frozen section and a cytological evaluation as well, okay? Two different specimens, two different sites. We have two different things going on. We have the frozen section and the cytological evaluation, all right? So we take a look at these codes for um, 88329, it's pathology consultation during surgery. All right, so we know we need to, to be there, but we're not gonna use 88329 because we need a little bit more, um, a little, a, a little, a little bit more of a descriptive code. Okay, so we did have the pathological uh, consultation during surgery, but we had a lot of things going on as far as what he consulted about. Okay, so A is gone. It's just not specific enough. So we come down. We know that eight eight three three one. That's the next code. That's that's with each of the answers in B, C, and D. But C is missing the modifier that we need for the professional services. And 88331 says the first tissue block with a frozen section or sections, single specimen. All right, so everybody was good with that. All right, there we go, that single specimen. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna put a little pin in it there. All right, so with 88332, each additional tissue block with frozen section, and we know that we didn't have any additional frozen blocks. So C is gone anyway because of that, and also it didn't have the modifiers. This leaves us here, these two match, these two, not so much. All right, now, 88333. It is for the cytological examination. All right, cytological examination. And it is for what? The initial site. All right, so when we take a look here, all right, it's saying use this in conjunction, use 88334 in conjunction with 88331, 88333, okay? Then we have here for intraoperative consultation on a specimen requiring both frozen section and cytological evaluation. We use 88331 and 88334. I see that, but this is for intraoperative consultation on a specimen. We had specimens, okay? We had two and from two different sites, okay? And because we had it from two different sites, the cytologic examination is going to be the initial, okay? Because we have a frozen section from the bile duct, that's the single initial specimen, that's our specimen here. This cytologic evaluation, it's from a bladder tumor, and that is the initial site, okay? Two different places, and I know you're reading this, but that's for a specimen. We had two specimens. This would apply if you had, on the bile duct tumor, you had a frozen section and a cytological e evaluation on that sample. But we have two specimens, not one. We have two, all right? So that's why we need 88333, okay? All right, and we, and we already talked about this professional component, and that really wasn't the issue. You guys understood this was a consult. We're reporting those professional services. That's why we need the 26, okay? So that's providing the supervision and the interpretation component of the procedure, okay? Yep, and I see it right there, but see right there where I where I have it right there, Soma, for intraoperative consultation on a specimen. That would mean one, one specimen. We have the specimen from two different sites, okay? It's coming from the bile duct tumor and from the bladder tumor, okay? And so this cytologic 
um, evaluation is from here. And so that's the initial site. If it were only from one specimen, be it from the bile duct or if you had had the bladder tumor and if they had done a frozen section and a cytological evaluation on this one specimen from the bladder, then we would use that. Okay. All right. That make that okay. So how is everybody? Take a breath. I need to hear from everybody because I, I y'all I know y'all were ready to fight me this morning on this thing. <laughs> All right. So everybody's good. This one, this one right here, we go back and forth with with this one. Even as instructors, each time I get ready to teach this particular section, I always recode it and look at it again. But this is the key right here on a specimen requiring both frozen and cytologic evaluation, you didn't have a single specimen that required both. You had two separate specimens that required, one required the frozen section, the other the cytologic examination. It was not on a single specimen, okay? Yeah, go ahead and grab your screenshot if you need it, okay? And then we're gonna keep on moving, all right? I would say that that would be our aha moment for today. And, and, and if that's the case, then that's good, okay? And, and right there. So grab your screenshot again here because this is a takeaway you want to have. There are two specimens from two different sites, the bile duct and the bladder. Thus, each specimen is the initial site. All right. Um, for this one, um, I would say put these notes like like it is here, Soma. This would be a good way to chun it is how I've... Um, boxed in and highlighted here that this is on a specimen. And then put this note right here that, that you know, if you have two specimens and, you know, you could write it just like I have it, put this in red, that there. So, so you're honing in on specimens. If they're from two different sites, that's key, then each specimen would be the initial site, but something to trigger your mind so that you're thinking in the right direction, okay? All right, so we're going to keep on moving because, hey, I got to make sure that I have y'all ready for this exam. I, I mean to see y'all name up on the screen. All right, Miss Bennett, let's do it. These coders are ready. They're ready. They're doing their thing. <laughs> yes, they are ready. Coders, that was, a, that was awesome. Okay, awesome, awesome. Lots of aha moments there. Uh, you make me proud. Okay, um, A86805 with modifier 26. 86817, B, 86817, and 86821, C, 86816 with modifier 26, 86821, and D, 86806 with modifier 26, and 86817. A patient will be undergoing a transplant and needs HLA tissue typing with DR slash DQ, multiple antigen and lymphocyte mixed culture. How will these services be coded? Coders, you have two and a half minutes to tell us exactly that. All right, good luck.
OK, that is time. Thank you, Miss Bennett. Hey, they, look at them. They are rolling, rolling, rolling. You guys are doing an outstanding job. Hey, we're just going to quickly go through this one. All of you got there. All right. They're undergoing this transplant. They're going to need this HLA tissue typing with the DRDQ multiple antigen and a lymphocyte mixed culture. Hey, no fooling you guys here. I knew you would get this. This one's straightforward. So just a matter of reading these, these codes properly and just coding what you see. So we have this HLA tissue typing, the DRDRQ multiple antigen. That's what we are honing in on, as well as the lymphocyte mixed culture. 86805 lymphocytotoxicity assay. Ah, that's saying a whole lot of things. Those keywords certainly don't match. So we're going to get rid of A. All right. We're going to take a look here at 86806. This is without titration. And we know that's no good. And what do I always tell you? If this parent's common code language, which is everything before this semicolon, if it's incorrect, then any dependent code that falls below it is going to be wrong as well. So once you cross that off the list, you already know, boom, I can get rid of it. I don't even have to read it because the common code language is incorrect. So we're already at 50%. Y'all know I like a good coupon. We're at 50-50. We got two for one with that one. So we're going to take a look at 86812. This is HLA typing. All right, yeah, that's we're in we're in we're in the right 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 ballpark here. So we're gonna take a look underneath this dependent code eight six eight one seven. This is DRDQ multiple antigens. Oh man, they're speaking our language. All right, so what about the eight six eight two one? This is lymphocyte culture mixed MLA. Oh yeah. All right, so what about this one? We're just going to do our due diligence. 86816, this is DRDRQ, DRDQ, single antigen. No, we had multiple. We're getting rid of that one. And we have the 86821. That was okay, but that lead code is incorrect. So B is the proper answer. And you guys got there, and I had no doubt that you would. All right, we're going to keep on going. I'm giving you guys all sprinkles. I am. I am. I'm loving it. We're going to keep on moving there. We're going to get on into the medicine section. All right, Miss Bennett, you have the floor. This baby in this scenario needs some shots. All righty. Okay. A90707, 90716, 90471, 90472 times 3. B90707, 90716, 90460, 90461 times 3. C90710, 90460, and D907109046. One zero nine zero four six zero nine zero four six one times three. A young child received a mumps, measles, rubella, and varicella MMR injection at a neighborhood clinic with provider counseling. What CPT codes are reported? Coders, your two and a half minutes begin now. Good luck.
Okay, that is time. Thank you, Miss Bennett. All right, yeah, I'm seeing some aha moments, okay? I'm loving it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We're gonna just go ahead and unpack it. So if you don't have certain notes in your manual, you can you can pop some in there now or just kind of fine tune um, what you have there, all right? So we have this young child, they're getting this MMR B, all right? The answer is D. And you guys were, were simply teetering between C and D for the most part, okay? so. We're gonna take a look here. They are receiving this um, MMRV injection and they are uh, having counseling along with it. This is a young child, okay? That's important as well. So we take a look here. We're gonna start out with 90707. This is for simply measles, mumps, and rubella. This vaccine also had the varicella with it. So MMR, don't quite have enough with that particular uh, vaccination. So we're gonna take that one away, all right? This is, they're putting it separate the, as VAR, the varicella uh, vaccine, but no, we're not gonna do it like that. That's, that's not what we need. The most efficient way would be to simply code for the measles, mumps, rubella, and the varicella vaccine, okay? Whenever you have a combination code, you use it, okay? And so this one is what we need. All right, now everybody got here. This was the sticking point, okay? And and I see somebody's like, ah, I thought, you know, like, hey, I didn't realize we had to break down each component. Yeah, we do. All right, so we know that 90710, we know that. What about this 90460, okay? This is for the administration of the vaccine, okay? So this is for, face-to-face -face counseling, any route, and they tell us in the scenario that they had counseling and this person is under 18 years old, all right, because they're saying a young child, all right, yeah, and definitely, that's right, Geetha, the chunning certainly helps. If you don't have it like this, this is what I have. Sometimes if you see little notes uh, when I'm explaining things, these are notes that I have in my personal chun manual, okay, so I'd like to pop a few of them in there. Um, so this is reminding me, this is face-to-face -face counseling. The administrative uh, route is any route, okay? And 18 years and under. Well, young child, we know they're 18 years and under. All right, this is for the first or the only component of each vaccine or toxoid. Ah, that's key right there, okay? So this is getting us for the mumps, but we've got three other components. There we go, that's that add-on code, 90461, each additional vaccine or toxoid component. Okay, that's why we need each additional. I put that right there too on that add-on code, all right? That'll keep you on track. And we've got measles, the rubella, and the varicella. All right, we're gonna need all that. This is missing the additional uh, vaccines that were given. All right, this one though, take a look there, all righty. You are gonna use 90460 for each vaccine administered, but for vaccines with multiple components or combination vaccines, and that's what this was, we have to report the 90460 in conjunction with 90461 for each additional component in that vaccine. And indeed we had three additional components. So this is for the vaccine MMRB. And this is for each component. We've got the mumps, all right? So there we go, the administration. We've got the mumps and then we've got measles, rubella and varicella, all right? The components, that's the administration, okay? All right, so I think everybody's good, okay? Well, like I said, we had a few people that were teetering and weren't sure about this. Yeah, we've got a code, code for each additional components and that's why these parenthetical guidelines they rule, all right? Okay, so if you need a screenshot, go ahead and grab it. We're gonna keep on rolling. All right, I know you're ready, Miss Bennett. You stay ready, you stay ready. Let's do this later. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I'm ready, ready. A, 94644 with modifier 76, J7609, J45.909. B94664, J7609, and J44.1. C94680, 
J7609, J45.901, D94640, 9464 with modifier 76, J7609 times 2, and J441. A 70-year-old patient with chronic obstructive asthma is brought to the urgent care center with increased wheezing and coughing. The provider initiated an albuterol inhalation treatment, one dose delivered by nebulizer. After treatment, the patient's exacerbation was somewhat improved, but the provider determined a second treatment was necessary. What codes are reported? Coders, your two and a half minutes begin now. Good luck. Very nicely done, coders. All right. Thank you, Miss Benny. All right, guys. You guys are just coding away today. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and unpack it. And I see some of you are talking about those modifiers. I'd like to see that. Okay. Yeah. Chun, chun, chun. That's right, Renata. I think we were saying last week we were talking about the little train that could. Yeah. The chuka, 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 chuka down the track. You guys, not only do I think you can, I know you can. All right. So the answer is indeed D. And yeah, we got to take a look at some parenthetical guidelines here, okay? So this patient is 70 years old. They have chronic obstructive asthma brought to the urgent care center, and the provider has initiated an albuterol inhalation treatment, one dose delivered by the nebulizer. And then after treatment, they decided that, hey, somewhat improved, but a second treatment would be necessary. So we're going to take a look here. We're going to zero in inhalation treatment, one dose nebulizer. Well, 94644, this is for continuous inhalation treatment with an aerosol medication. All right. And this is for services of less than one hour. All right. So we would use code 94640. So we're going to take a 94644 away. That's for continuous. Okay because we know that they had one dose and then they had a second treatment. It wasn't continuous, all right? So for 
six four all right don't get those confused if you're reading really fast i always have to get my glasses out for that one this one is different very different this is for demonstration and or evaluation of uh, the patient with the utilization utilization of this aerosol generation. We know when we first start reading it, demonstration and or evaluation, uh -uh, that's, that's the wrong procedure going on. We're gonna get rid of that one. So now we're down here to 94680 and 94640. This is oxygen uptake expired gas analysis. Ah, no, we know that's really wrong, all right? We we had we 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 didn't have any of that going on. Okay, so what about 94640? Well, this is reading exactly what, what we're seeing here that's going on in the scenario. It's pressurized or non-pressurized inhalation treatment. It's for acute airway obstruction for therapeutic purposes and or diagnostic purposes. And we have this nebulizer, okay? Yeah, I like it, okay? Now it's also telling us don't report 94640 in conjunction with these codes that follow. But for more than one inhalation treatment performed on the same date, and we know a second treatment was given, we have to append modifier 76, okay? Now for continuous inhalation treatment of one hour or more, then we would use the 94644, but we know because of that second treatment, we need that 76 modifier. All right, so yeah, I saw some of you going, hey, we need the 76, that's right. Once you read down here and you see that, really once you get rid of that one, you know, ah, that's what I need is that one, okay? And then we know here, just due diligence, we're going into the Hicks manual. It's letting us know about the albuterol, and that is indeed J7609. It is times two because with the second treatment, we would need some additional albuterol. And then J44.1, it is coding for this chronic exacerbation of the chronic obstruction, uh, obstructive asthma in the urgent care center. All right, so that's how we got there. And that makes D your answer. All right, so um, I want to be sure. Let's see. I think everybody, yeah, got there. And let me go back really, really quick. Uh, the thing that caught my eye with this is that if uh, the continuous, that always caught my eye because it, it looks like that would be a good code because it's talking about aerosol medication. This is more uh, code specific here. The continuous, what you want to do is zero in again these parenthetical guidelines. This would be for services uh, that are, this is for the first hour. So it's telling you if it's for less than one hour, you would use the 94640. We know that that's for less than one hour because it's not telling us that they had a continuous uh, albuterol or aerosol medication treatment, okay? They're telling us they had this inhalation treatment one dose, all right? Once you see that one dose and nebulizer and they're not telling you anything about time either that it was continuous, that's no good, and this parenthetical guideline is telling you as well. And then right here is telling you also, okay, for continuous treatment, one or more is telling you here. But this is more code specific based on what we have. And also we needed this second treatment, and we know we're going to use that same code, but we need the 76 modifier. So if you see continuous and, and you chose this one, know that this was for less than an hour, okay? That's why we need this, plus it was more code specific, okay? Yeah, all right, Geetha, that's right. You gotta check all of this stuff, okay? So, hey, we're gonna move on to the next one. I just wanted to bring that to your attention that those parenthetical guidelines will indeed continue to pivot you in the right direction. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna read this one. I know you guys love Cody for in stage renal disease and treatments. Okay, I, I know you got it. Let's do it, Miss Bennett. They're ready. I'm taking you in, lady. They're ready. Yes, they are. Alrighty. A90969, B90960, C90969 times 25, and D90957. An 18 year old end stage renal disease patient is receiving dialysis services and has had two face to face visits with her physician within 25 days. On the 26th day, she's admitted to the hospital for inpatient management 
without a complete assessment. She remains in the hospital unit until the end of the month. Code for the physician services for the 25 days. Coders, your two and a half minutes begin now. Good luck. Okay, it's time, coders. Thank you, Miss Bennett. All right, I see some more answers coming in there. Go ahead and pop those answers in the chat before we start taking a taking a sneak peek at this thing. All right. All right. If I got some more takers, go ahead and pop your answers in there. I give you guys just a little bit of a moment if you need to get the answer in there. And hey, if you're not sure, that is okay. All right, that's exactly why you're here, all right? And you guys are doing fantastic. And for the ones that you're just missing, I want you to be encouraged because the reason I like to see everybody's answer in there because often it's just one little thing that needs to be tweaked, okay? So no worries. I'm seeing based on your answer that you all have a grasp of a tremendous amount of this material. You're right where you should be, okay? So we're just gonna fine tune it a bit, all right? And I'm gonna give you some suggestions on how to chun this uh, and add some different things to help pivot you in the right direction to keep your, keep your thoughts clear as you navigate these particular codes. So the answer is C, okay? So here we go, we're gonna, Take a look at it, all right? Yeah, that's right, Lisa. <laughs> you are spot on. All right, so we've got this 18-year-old with end-stage renal disease, or ESRD. They are on dialysis, and they've had two face-to-face -face visits with the physician within 25 days. But on day 26, they've been admitted without a complete assessment, okay? So they're going to remain in the hospital for, for the till the end of the month. And we're gonna code for these physician services for those 25 days. So we're gonna take a look here. Remember that as long as the patient has had a complete assessment, then they can bill for a full month of services. 
So has this patient had a complete assessment? Now, now what codes could you eliminate because the patient did not have a complete assessment? That's right, Geetha, no, they didn't have a complete assessment. They're telling you here. Okay, they, they've been, they, they are been admitted, but they didn't have a complete assessment. So now we can't use these codes that bill for monthly services. All right, so we're going to get rid of 90957 because that's for monthly services. All right, so all of these things that it's talking about, the development, counseling of the patients, as soon as we see that they didn't have a full assessment, okay, without a complete assessment, these monthly codes, they have to go away. So 90957, that one's off the table. All right, so there we go. 90957, 90960, they are for a full month of services. All right, we had less than a full month of services. Those are our monthly codes. If you don't have it chun like that and you see per month, if you don't have that by these codes, then you need to notate somewhere or, or circle it and put monthly. Okay, these are for monthly services, or you can do like I have for a full month of services. Okay, then you use these, these codes. It has to be, all right, and they have to have had a complete assessment. So these little notes like that, that'll keep you on track. Did they have a full assessment? If they, if they didn't, these are disqualified, okay? So that leaves us with 90969. Okay, yeah, all, yep, <laughs> that's right, Lisa. All the monthly, all the monthly codes, they gotta go to the left. Okay, so we're remaining codes are 90969. Well, here we go, 90967 through 90970. These are for services for less than a full month of service per day. These patients have partial month, a partial month where there was one or more face-to-face -face visits without the complete assessment. That's what's going on, okay? Yeah, they've had two face-to-face -face visits, all right? And they did not have a complete assessment. That's sounding like something that's going on here, all right? So we're going to take a look, all right? So this is our uh, code uh, family here, 90967 is the parent. In-stage renal disease, related services for dialysis, less than a full month of service per day. And this is for patients 12 to 18 years of age, and this patient is indeed 18. So how do we account for it? It's per day, all right? This is the common code language. So you wanna put per day by, by, by this family of codes, all right? And, and how many days did we have? We had 25 days. So we're gonna need that multiplier because it's per day, all right? How are we feeling, coders? How are we feeling? So if you chose A, now you understand when you read the code language because many of you got there, but it's per day. All right, it's per day. And we had 25 days, all right, that this, that this coder, all right, that you've got to account for. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh, yep. Sometimes that, that multiplier is what gets you. So definitely hone in on the per day right there and, and maybe even put this note in your uh, along uh, somewhere on that page that you need to remember that as long as that patient has had a complete assessment, then they could be for a full month of services. But as soon as they haven't, you got to look at these per day codes, okay? How we doing? How we doing? I need to hear from you in the chat. I need to hear from you in the chat. Let's see here. I've heard from, from Geetha in there and I see Miss Lisa. All right, Esmita, that's what I want to hear. Great. I, you guys are just doing your thing. Yeah, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going, okay? So there we go. Per day clothes, you're going to need that multiplier. All right, less than a full month of services. Use if no complete assessment. You can you can put that in there too, okay? All right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the 25, it's times 25. That's, that's the multiplier, okay? And we know it's a multiplier because it's per day. Uh, never, never, Geetha, that's why you're here. Look here. <laughs> if, if you only knew 
I'm still learning too. <laughs> never, never, never. All right, here we go. We're going to keep on going. All right, Miss B, let's do this thing, lady. These coders, they're ready, okay? And y'all know, y'all y'all my family. Y'all my baby. Y'all can make me pull the tissue out, Miss Betty. They freaking me the tears. Come on. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I will become. Okay, A90832, 90785F84.0. B90785, F84.0. C90882, F84.0. And D, 90791, 90785, and F84.9. A therapist in a residential care facility works with a nonverbal autistic child, age four. In this session, the therapist uses drawing paper and washable markers. The therapist sat with the child and began to draw on a sheet of paper. She gave paper and markers to the child and encouraged the child to draw. The psychotherapy session lasted 30 minutes. Coder, coders, your time begins now. Good luck. And that is time coders. How do you feel about that question? Tell me in the chat. Good, easy, tricky. Maybe yes. Tricky, could be. Um, as you know, I moderate the MMM. And so I wanna tell you with each question, I uh, I can tell whether or not uh, with certain questions, I can tell whether or not your books are chun. So um, keep that in mind when you are when you are testing. Chun is really awesome. If uh, we have a colleague who says, "If you don't chun, you're done," I really believe that. So make sure you chun. It's a long time, but it's well worth your time. Okay. I will mute myself so Miss Tamika can continue now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Miss <Ms. laughs> Hey, you're right. She always says it too. If you if you don't chun, you're done. <laughs> yes, continue on. And like and and I have to echo the words of Miss Bennett. Yes, it is well worth 
the investment of your time. It really, really is. Okay. So just, just take a breath and keep doing it. And uh, I would sit in front of the TV and watch TV to do my cold families. Not when I start, you know, digging in and, and really uh, putting things, uh, you know, writing things at the cold level, but you can circle your, your cold families while you're just kind of, you know, just kind of vegging out in front of the TV or listening to some music. So here we go. Let's go ahead and unpack it. All right. So many of you got there to, hey, I like it. I like it. If you, if you just missed it, no worries. We're going to just tweak it just a bit for you. Okay. So this therapist is in a residential care facility. This is a nonverbal autistic child who is four. And the therapist has sat with this child and encouraged the child to draw. And this psychotherapy session lasted for 30 minutes. So what do we have here? Well, we're going to start right off the cuff with 90785. We already know ah, that's no good because this add-on code, it's going to need a primary code. It can't stand alone. So that one's off the board. We take a look at 90791. This is for a psychiatric diagnostic evaluation. This indeed is for a psychotherapy session. That's different. All right, so we're going to take that one off. So if you're chunning, you could just put psychiatry. Um, sometimes I'll do things like capitalize like the first uh, four or five letters, psychiatric in caps, and then, you know, uh, lowercase for the remainder of it just to draw my eye so I don't start crossing psychiatric and psychotherapy. All right, so we take that one off. We take a look at uh, 90882. This is for environmental intervention for medical management. We know that nothing like that happened. And that leaves us with code 90832, psychotherapy, 30 minutes with the patient. Okay, so there we go. Psychotherapy lasted 30 minutes. All right, and that's where we need to be. And what is this 90785? Well, yeah, this is for interactive complexity. All right, so what is that? Well, interactive complex complexity, we know that's an add-on code. We couldn't use it there, but we can use it here. It specifies, it's specific to psychiatric services that refer to communication difficulties during a psychiatric encounter. And indeed, this child was autistic. All right, so that's why we are adding that. And it tells us here in the parenthetical guidelines to use, in fact, this code in conjunction with codes for diagnostic psychiatric evaluation. All right, and it's including our code right there, psychotherapy 90832. Yeah, we're right where we need to be. All right, and then we've got these do not report code uh, parenthetical guidelines. And then just for completeness sake, F84.0 is for the autistic disorder. And I remind you, you would not be digging in this ICD-10 CM book because you already are where you need to be with this first lead code. So I want to emphasize and remind you, do not pull out that ICD-10 code unless you need to in order to break a tie. Okay. All right. Yes, you can. Yes, whatever you need to write at your code level, then you can write it. You can write it to, to help guide you, okay? Like, you remember to use my multiplier. Remember, you know, I even had examples on reminding myself how to do certain um, problems as far as, like, multiplying certain things. All of these things are, are specific for you, okay? So that's why I always say we are giving you the loose framework with the with the concept of churn, chunning, the circle, highlight, underline, and notate, but you make it specific as far as how what color you use and all those things, okay? All right, so we got some more. You guys are blowing us away. All right, are you ready? Are you ready, Miss Bennett? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> guys, can you believe how much fun we have at this? I mean, it's it's really amazing to me. So anyway, okay. Um, all right, A99503, I50.9, J96.11, B99503, I50.9, J80, C99504, I50.1, J96.11, and D99503, I50.1, and J80. A patient with congestive heart failure 
and chronic respiratory failure with hypoxia is placed on home oxygen. Prescribed treatment is 2L nasal cannula oxygen at all times. A home care nurse visited the patient to assist with this oxygen management. What CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported? Encoders, you have two and a half minutes. Good luck. Fantastic job, coders, and time is up. Thank you, Miss Bennett. All right, coders, if you hadn't got that answer in there, hey, let me know what you're thinking. Let us know what's on your mind. Go ahead and put it in there. So I'll know if I need to concentrate on anything in particular. All right, so from what I am seeing, you guys are spot on and you are, yes! Everybody's getting there. Everybody's doing their thing. All right. So no worries. Okay. Um, if you didn't quite get there, we're going to get you there. No worries. We're going to get you there. and We're going to get you there right now. Here we go. So here are our keywords. This patient has congestive heart failure and chronic respiratory failure with hypoxia and they are on home oxygen. This home care nurse, okay, they visited the patient to assist with their oxygen management. So I love when, you know, we can, we can narrow it down. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this a little closer. Home oxygen, oxygen management. Well, we already know. 99503, this is home visit for respiratory care. And they're giving us an example here, oxygen therapy. That sounds pretty good to me. We're going to give it a light yes, because we need to do our due diligence and check out 99504. Well, we already know no mechanical ventilation care was going on. So we're going to get rid of that one. All right. So we're, we've knocked off a few things. All right, but all of these are the same now. This is an instance we've got to dig into that ICD-10 manual. All right, so we take a look. We have I-50.1. This is for left ventricular failure unspecified. All right, well, that's not what we had going on. All right, so let's take a look at I-50.9. This is for heart failure congestive 
heart failure, not otherwise specified. That's exactly what we have is congestive heart failure. All right, so let's give that a light. Yes, and keep digging just a wee bit more. We have J96.11. All right, so we get here, and this is letting us know we've got to go a little bit further. We're going to indeed need five characters. Okay, so we're, we're going to keep on going. And we have here chronic respiratory failure with hypoxia. That's exactly what we have with this patient. Okay, so congestive heart failure. All right, with hypoxia. All right, chronic respiratory failure. Yeah, I like it. So we're going to take a look here. J80 is acute respiratory failure distress syndrome. All right, yeah, but we are coding here for heart failure and chronic respiratory failure with hypoxia. All right, and that's how you get there. All righty. Okay, so I hope you guys are, are, are doing all right with that one. <laughs> okay, so that's how we get there, all right? So you, it's just a matter of getting to where you need to be in this book and getting more specific with the code, okay? So you have to code to uh, provide a certainty and specificity. That's exactly where you need to be. All right, so we're going to keep on rolling. If you need a screenshot, go ahead and grab it. All right, and we're going to keep on going. But you know what? I don't want to do this one because time is getting close. So I want to do something that will uh, be a little bit more beneficial. Let's, let's do this one. We're going to talk about some food allergies, okay? So let's squeeze this one in, Miss Bennett. All right, you have the floor, lady. Okie doke, allergies are near and dear to my heart. All right, A, 95125, B, 95117, C, 95144, and D, 95146. Mary, who has food allergies, came to her physician for her weekly allergen immune therapy that consists of two injections prepared and provided by the physician. The correct code is, encoders, you have two and a half minutes, and that time begins now. Good luck.
Okay, that is time. Thank you, Miss Bennett. Look here, they are blowing it up in the chat. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I am talking about. No worries, no worries, Miss Su Susan, no worries. You guys are doing outstanding. You really, really are, all right? Here we go. We're gonna talk about these food allergies. Yeah, the answer is A, and many of you got there, and, and some of you needed a nudge, and we're gonna help you get that nudge because on the exam, we won't be there to give you the nudge, so I wanna be sure you're clear. But that lets me know whenever someone gives me an answer and then we give them a little nudge and then you immediately move over to the proper answer that lets me know you've gotten it down to 50 50 and those are always tremendous odds okay so we're gonna get you there all right so we've got these food allergies and you guys were spot on with this okay the food allergies the physician is giving her weekly allergen immune therapy and they're having two injections that are prepared and provided by this physician so what do we need here? We have code 95115. All right, so this is professional services for allergen immunotherapy, not including provision of the allergenic extracts. That's our common code language here, okay? And this dependent code 95117 is falling underneath. It is uh, including two or more injections, but it's not including the provision of the allergenic extract, okay? So that's why that one's off the board, doesn't include the provision of those extracts, okay? And we know that the physician indeed prepared and provided those things. So we're gonna keep on going. We have uh, code 95144. This is for professional services, for supervision of preparation and provision of antigens for allergenic immunotherapy. This is coding for antigens, but not for allergenic extracts, all right? so. You can use some of these, some of the notations and different things that I have here to address the code at the code level to keep it straight in your head because those are two different things, an antigen and an allergenic extract. Those are different things. So we have code 95145. This is the parent. All right. And this is for, again, professional services. It's for allergenic immunotherapy. All right, but this is for two single stinging insect venoms, okay? This is coding for insect venoms, not for allergenic extracts. So that one's going. And then we have code 95120, professional services, allergen, allergen immunotherapy in the office. We know that they've come in to see the office. This is including provision of the allergenic extract. And it tells us, the two injections prepared and provided by the physician. All right, this one is for a single injection. So this common language, everything before that semicolon is good, but the code specific language, that doesn't help us, but that's not what we're looking for anyway. We're looking for 95125. Indeed, this is for two or more injections and they did come in for their weekly immunotherapy for two injections. So 95125 is your code. All right. All right, coders, grab the screenshot if you need it. And you guys have been tremendous as usual. And you know I would keep on going if time would allow. But you know, you know, at, at one o'clock I turn into a pumpkin. All right. So <laughs> We want to take this time to remind you that indeed no classes are next week, the 23rd through the 28th. Okay, so Thanksgiving, please remember it is a time for food and fun. And I'm here to wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. I so appreciate you guys spending your Saturday with me in the morning. This is precious time. I hope that we are making good use of your time and that you will understand that the investment that you put forth every Saturday that you get it back in tremendous, tremendous returns. All right. So please leave us your feedback. As always, it's important to us. It helps your instructor help you. It continues to help AMCI deliver quality classes to you. So deserving students. And it also means, hey, I don't know what's on your mind. Let me know what I can do to continue to facilitate your learning. All right. Ms. Bennett and I, we want to know, and you know, I'm not going to leave here without having her come to the floor. I think I made a rhyme, Miss Bennett. Yeah, come on, lady. <laughs> You're a poet and you didn't even know it. I didn't know it. 
coders, thank you so much. You guys were fantastic in the chat today. Um, we actually could keep up, which is always awesome for me anyway. So you all have a safe and uh, bountiful Thanksgiving, and uh, we will see you soon, okay? Thank you, Miss Bennett. Yeah, you guys go ahead, take your watch off for the weekend, just for even just an hour, okay? Or just don't look at it, all right? Relax, enjoy some quality time with your loved ones this weekend. As usual, you guys have been amazing. Thank you all for hanging out with us and spending your valuable time with us today. I'm gonna miss you guys on next Saturday, but hey, make some wonderful memories. Take the time to just refresh and enjoy. You guys are greatly appreciated and we will see you on the next Saturday study session. You guys make it a great one.